Today, I will show you my favorite high gain amp models from the XFX3. For those of you who are familiar with the XFX and fractal audio products in general, you may know that uh, these units they come with a shitload of amp models. As you can see here, um, these are all the amps in the XFX. Um, today, on firmware 14.01, I think, uh, we have 282 amps. And um, I'm a long time user of Fractal Audio products, so I found out some amp models which seem to be quite easy to dial in for high gain tones. And uh, today, I would like to show you my favorite high gain models. Um, the first one. You already heard it in the intro, it was the uh, Atomica High model. And um, my patch sounds like this. But um, I will disengage some of the effects like the pitch block, multiband compression, was the parametric EQ. I'm using the uh, 4x12 Rector standard with a 57 mic. Um, for your audio, it's the number 841. Uh, set a low cut at 94 hertz, no high cut. And um, I will reset the amp block by another amp block and then show you this, how it sounds in the stock settings. So these are the stock settings and uh, it's basically a crunchy Marshall-like tone. Um, but for high gain, uh, I like to, to boost the amp a little bit more. So I'm using the input boost and uh, switch it on and um, you have more uh, parameters to control the input boost in the uh, preamp section. You can see here, you can choose a boost type. So I'm using the full tone OD. And um, by the way, now I'm using my Harley Benton Fusion 2 Pro model with a uh, roasted neck, roasted fretboard, and uh, two Roswell humbuckers, uh, Floyd Rose 1000 series tremolo. And um, this guitar doesn't have a very high output, so how does it sound with the. <laughs> Still a little bit floppy in the bass, um, so I would reduce the depth, which is the uh, I think then controls the negative feedback uh, in the uh, lower bass frequencies on um, the power amp section. I raise the input drive a little bit. So as you can hear, um, it's still uh, it's already uh, a high gain sound with a little bit of um, of meat in the in the mid, as you would need it in a live situation. But also um, we could push it a little bit more, and um, in the XFX you can use the input EQ for that purpose and maybe boost the 800 hertz while we do this. Uh, set the frequency around 800 and wider range of the Q and maybe boost it about 6 dB. And suddenly we have more saturation but also I will raise the low cut a little bit. This is the low cut that sits front of the preamps so um, it will cut the, uh, the lows of the guitar signal a little bit. You can raise this quite high. As you can see the flubbiness is gone and it's a saturated high gain tone. And we are still more or less at the stock settings here, just reduce the depth a little bit and uh, well, we adjust the gain. 
So this amp is, in my opinion, uh, very easy to dial in. And of course you can fine tune it. And I like to use the output EQ because it gives you a much wider variety of, uh, um, of frequencies to address than you have in the, uh, in the input section where you just have bass, middle, treble and high treble. And also the power amp controls, presence and depth. So in the output EQ I found out uh, that the 7 band EQ frequencies they match quite good with a Marshall like amp. We boosted some of the 800 Hertz in front of the amp so I would maybe reduce it a little bit here. But I d definitely recommend to do this by ear and um, so uh, not just look at someone's settings and um, copy them. This might be a little bit too much. stereo tape delay and um, well sounds quite good to me um, also um, it doesn't have any annoying frequencies because if you like to have a more or less a metal rhythm rhythm tone you could boost some frequencies here in the upper mid range maybe around the 1.6k or 3.2k <laughs> But other than that, I think the amp is sounding pretty good in the stock settings already. Okay, the next amp model I would like to show you is um, another Marshall-like amp. And it's called the Brit Pre. It's something which already was there in the uh, XFX1 and XFX2. And um, maybe a uh, modeling version of the uh, JMP pre JMP1 preamp, these uh, small rack unit. And um, we turn off the delay. The stock settings. As you can hear, it sounds pretty bright. But already it doesn't sound flubby in the bass, it's very tight. So the first thing I would do is I would reduce the presets a little bit. It doesn't do anything. Maybe it has something to do with the, uh, with the power amp. doesn't seem to work pretty well so I would go to the output EQ and reduce the, the harsh frequencies there maybe a little bit too much Also, I would like to get a little bit more input drives, so um, I would uh, use the, the boost trick, the 800 Hertz. By the way, this trick seems to work very well with Marshall-like amps. Maybe it has something to do with the tone stack. <laughs> Use a little bit of the mids. 
Maybe I will do it here with the 800 hertz. And also I would like to have a little bit more bass. So I would raise it here in the lower mid range. But you have to be careful with the like the 200 hertz because it tends to get boomy. Turn on the delay. And as you can hear, it's a uh, nice lead tone, like uh, like we know from the Marshall amps, especially from the Supreme, has tons of gain, and um, also it doesn't have that much uh, unnecessary low uh, frequencies in the bass. And um, well, as you can see, we are at the stock settings here, more or less, just reduced the presence and. Um, well, did some equalization in the graphic EQ, but um, overall, I think it's a very, um, very easy to use a high gain amp. The next model uh, I would like to show you is uh, one of the Friedman amps, and. Um, Especially in the XFX2, I like to use the Friedman HBE, the Harry Brown Eye model uh, 2018. And as you can see, you have a variety of HBE models here. And in the XFX3, I found the um, the model HBE. Very nice. So at stock settings, it just sounds like this. So, a little bit loud. We reduce the volume. So as you can hear, we are near the sound that we got with the uh, with the uh, JMP1 model, um, but this amp has a little bit more bass, so I will re start uh, by reducing the depth. <laughs> And um, also, um, it seems to be a little bit harsh to my ears, but that could also be due to the uh, to the guitar because um, these pickups are very bright. It's possible, especially the the neck pickup, uh, the bridge pickup. <laughs> So usually what I'm doing is I'm uh, cutting the uh, the higher frequencies with the parametric EQ in front of the amp. So I will turn on this. And as you can hear, the sound is um, quite saturated already, but. Um, just for the sake of doing it, we will use our uh, our trick with the 800 hertz boost. Raise it to dB. As you can see here, the uh, low cut is pretty high in the input section, it's around 500 hertz. Also, we will re reduce the high cut a little bit. Shouldn't do too much because already we are using the high cut. Input parametric EQ, but then we would turn this off and just hear how it sounds. We can reduce it a little bit more. As you can 
can see we are still at the stock settings here. It's a little bit uh, harsh to my ears, so I will re reduce the presence. Always we have to, to find out which of these knobs is uh, addressing this harshness. Sometimes the presence, sometimes the high treble, and sometimes even the treble is located very high in the frequency range. Pleasant to the ear, but a little bit boomy. So first, I would like to reduce some bass. Well, that seemed to address another frequency band. So I would like to reduce something uh, around the 250 hertz or the 200 hertz. Maybe we'll try to reduce 250 hertz a little bit. <laughs> With the Friedman amps, I'd like to boost the uh, like the 2K region a little bit. And in my opinion, then it sounds a little bit more like the JCM 800 tone stack. Okay, finally I would like to show you another high gain amp model which uh, I like quite a lot and that is um, called the Angel Severe. I think it's a, a model of the Angel Savage 120 and this amp is um, it's a little bit different from the other amps I showed you, it's not um, typically um, what it Marshall amp it has quite another tone stack and also um, it has a um, it has two knobs for the uh, for the input drive section also the real amp has uh, these two knobs usually the um, the high gain amps also the um, like the um, Tomica or maybe uh, other Marshall amps they have more than one gain stages but you can address and not separately with knobs, you can just set the overall level of the gain stages. But in some amps, like the uh, the Angle Savage, you have two um, explicit knobs to address the first and the second gain stage. So you have this in, in the model here, and um, these are the. I will go back. These are the stock settings. Also very bright, maybe due to the pickups again. And uh, it's not a high gain sound. So what I would do with the usual, uh, with the real uh, Angle Savage 120 is I would raise the overdrive. And then set the input drive around maybe one o'clock. So let's try this. <laughs> And we have already a very saturated high gain tone, which is very clear, which is something I know from the real angle amps. But it's still a little bit, a uh, little bit harsh, so I would reduce the high treble. So 
smells already very full and rich to me, not too harsh, not too much bass. But uh, the thing with the Angle Tone Stack is um, most of their real amps, um, they sound very good if you um, put them at noon, but the Tone Stack is quite different from what I'm used to, so I didn't get the best results uh, with their uh, Tone Stacks with using the bass middle and treble. So here I would also like to use the output EQ section and um, let's hear the sound again. <laughs> With this amp I would just uh, scoop the mids a little bit and uh, for that purpose I would choose another maybe a three-way uh, graphical EQ, three-band EQ, let's take the three-band console and reduce the mid. <laughs> very full and rich to me um, but just in case um, we could get get it even better we would choose the mark EQ this is the uh, 5 band EQ from the mark amplifiers the Mesa mark series and um, this equalizer seems to work well with high gain amps so I would start by reducing the mids 750 hertz phase. <laughs> And for a little bit of uh, more punch, you could raise the 2.2k fader. <laughs> Maybe reduce the 240 hertz fader a little bit, get it less boomy. Well, there it is. I think this sound uh, will work pretty good in a recording situation. You're recording high gain tones. And also in a live situation, um, I would reduce maybe the, the bass and travel a little bit more by using a high and a low cut with this parametric EQ after the cap. But overall, it's a very round sound without any uh, like uh, spikes in the frequency curve. So it's like uh, the the real angle amps. They seem to have very very even sound and um, it's also um, they are quite easy to dial in and uh, they don't tend to get flubby or fizzy um, if you if you uh, set them all at, uh, set all the uh, knobs at noon well that's it from me my favorite high gain amp models in the xfx3 there are a couple of other ones um, i'm using sometimes but uh, i think these Four are the ones where I uh, where I end up in the most situations, and um, yeah, please try them out. Post your comments below. Hit like or subscribe, and see you soon. <laughs>